I think as, since we were talking about, you know, the generational shift for socialism, the labor market for young people is super isolating. And a reason that it's super isolating is because unions in America are super weak right now. And, you know, you see the benefits of, you, know, you look at the benefits of what unions won people 30, 40 years ago when unions were stronger, we can win those same kind of fights if younger people, you know, start to organize themselves. And, uh, I, you know, <laughs> it's a just thing to do and it's the right thing to do. We don't mm -hmm. learn a whole lot about the history of unions in our country and, you know, what they've won and their role in improving the world and improving this nation. Yeah. And, yeah, just activating people saying, you know, unionizing in your workplace is not a bad thing. Yeah. And showing people how to do that is the right thing to do. You know what? And both of you have hit on this, um, the answer to that last question. You you both have kind of in a roundabout way uh, hit on this. Um, but I want to I want to just bring it out a little bit clearer um, in this concept of of America versus a third world um, exploitation and our luxuries. Um, you both kind of hit on this. There there still is the underlying force of global organizing. And you mentioned the SEIU, uh, the international unions that do that global organizing. But I think we've seen historically a very intentional play by the elite to minimize that sense of international community. And even the premise of the question continues that nationalistic identity over an international identity. And as you said at the beginning, uh, Emily, that socialism is um, is should be international um, in its in its best format. So um, I just want to throw that out there because I think that's something that uh, you both were hinting at and kind of alluded to. But I just wanted to make sure to that question, we say that, you know, we should look globally um, and not allow ourselves to be so nationalistic to the detriment of our own best interest at the end of the day. So. All right, so I'm going to let you both get the last word, however you want to give the last word. And then as you give the last word, tell us where we can find out more about the Democratic Socialists of America. And Larry, if you would, I want you to start only because I want you to explain that this is not, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is not a political party, but it's more of a social movement, organizing movement. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, give us the last words and then tell us how to get up with the with DSA. Yeah, and just to go back with exploitation, this is a reason why uh, interleft solidarity uh, against, you know, Clintonism and her militarism is such an important thing. You know, there's a very economic you know, part to what she's doing and it benefits the ruling class mm -hmm. hundred percent. And a reason why it's important for us to stand up to her militarism is because it's exploitative. So, you know, international solidarity is something that we definitely put to the forefront. But yeah, DSA is not a political party. We don't run candidates. Uh, we've, you know, there's talk within DSA to potentially you know, if we were to get powerful enough, as I was saying before, mobilizing uh, millennials and the working class and people of color, if we can get big enough, then maybe we could become that force. But you don't want to stretch yourself too thin and really get invested in things that can burn people out. Mm -hmm. um, what was the rest of the question? <laughs> um, tell us how to get more information on DSA and how we connect with all of you. Yeah, so uh, if you want to learn more about DSA, you can go to dsausa.org. And if you go to the Get Involved, there's a Join Us button. Uh, we have, you know, you can join as a student, as a low-income person, or if you're super rich, you can, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can help us fund socialism because as the great Joe Schwartz says, you can't defeat capitalist trash without socialist cash. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah if, if you wanted to reach out to me i'm on twitter at larry website i'll you know i'll dm with you and help you 
get situated within DSA, or if you need help, uh, you can reach out to the John Dada of DSA, the real McCoy, David Duhalde. He's our deputy director, and he's on Twitter at uh, don't know. <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to screw it up. David. Uh, yeah, at David Duhalde. I'll get in touch with you. Um, yeah, we're, you know, we all start somewhere, and yep. What we like to do is take people that come into our group, uh, you know, quiet people that aren't leaders and turning every single member that we have into someone that's a leader and someone that can help lead the way rather than a very, you know, top-down approach. DSA is very decentralized, so everybody has a powerful voice within DSA. Awesome. Emily, you get oh, the last... Just, oh, go ahead, Larry. I got to shout out Matt Frick, Carl Bayer. Shout out to the Trap House. Uh, that's about all I got. Yeah, okay, so that was, you broke up, but I heard you say Matt Bruni, Carl Bear, and Chapo Trap House. Uh, shout out to all of you guys. Love all their work. Um, Emily, you get the last word. Um, uh, matter of fact, you get the last word of the night. I'm not even saying anything else. So when you're done, I'm playing the closing <laughs> music. What do you have to say? All right, so no pressure then. Um, so I will just stump a little bit for YDS. So we are the youth version of D, uh, DSA. You can find us at ydsusa.org. Um, and I just want to sort of speak to the, you know, the empowerment of young people getting involved with politics, right? So it, it's a life-changing thing. And, you know, find the young people in your life and get them out there. It will change them for the better. And I know it's cheesy, but it's awesome. Get involved. Um, and also find me on Twitter at, um, at C underscore M underscore play. It's like the Pink Floyd song. Mm -hmm. Um, so come chat and I'll help you out with like finding your voice as a young person. Like, let's do this guys. It'll be awesome. Awesome. And you know, I lied because I forgot to do something first. Okay. So before I do this, Larry, thank you. Um, uh, Emily, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys coming on. But before I sign off, I have to make sure I uh, thank all of my sponsors and all of the people who support the show. So I'm not going to make you sit through that as a tacit endorsement of my yeah. show. Thank you guys so much. And i um, love to talk to you more about this next time. Right, thank you so much. My pleasure.